beer. Yeah. Yeah. I like beer. It helps relax me. I'm nervous in front of cameras. No, don't be. You're talking to me. I know. You've, you've really put me at ease. Tell me your name one more time. My name is Marie. Marie. I should be able to remember that. That's right. Ma, ma, I just okay, can you pronounce it the French way? Marie. I'm sorry. Do you want to put it in your... Uh, oh, yeah I, could, yeah. I could put that. Could you strap it on it? Yeah, it's perfect. Great. Perfecto. Thank you, Marie. Dave, are you all set? Ready to go? Ready to answer questions. Ready for the interrogation. Yes, I'm on this So, Dave. Yes. When was the first time you heard Jackson's music? Uh, I was, uh, I think I was 15, I believe, uh, fif yeah, 15 or 16, um, with the heavy weather recording with Teen Town and Birdland. Uh, it, it was just, it had, you know, I was, I was, it just started playing electric bass. I started out on acoustic uh, and electric about the same time, 15 or 16 years old, high school. And I came up through the band program, uh, in my high school band program, you know, so. I started playing uh, uh, brass instruments. I played trumpet and euphonium and tuba, and then switched to electric bass because uh, I could read music and I realized that that I could start working professionally as a bass player because of the fact that I learned to read music. And, and there was well, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, which is in the Midwest, and there was a, there was kind of a dearth of bass players in the area that I grew up in. So uh, I started playing in rehearsal bands and started playing, you know, weddings and and uh, and pit orchestras and different things professionally. By the time I was 16, 17 years old, I was I was playing gigs, and uh, so I, I I had aspirations in a as, you know in a career in music. And uh, the first time I heard Jocko, it had a tremendous impact on me. Uh, Jocko, Jocko revolution. Not only did he revolutionize the bass, but he revolutionized music too in a lot of ways. He was the first person to really exploit the melodic. Uh, um, power of the electric bass, really more so than anyone else. I mean, Jack Bruce and and um, Larry Graham and Stanley Clark and some other people had 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 started exploring that area, but Jocko defined it more clearly than anybody at that time. There was nobody at that period of time that was playing melody on the bass with the kind of harmonic command that Jocko had had developed by that time, and he was. He was, you know, I guess, I think he was probably still in his 20s, but he, had, he was leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else at that, at that point. So I, I, I like to refer to music from the 70s, you know, the whole fusion era, as uh, me, there's music before Jocko and music after Jocko, because he, he influenced a lot more than just bass players. He influenced composers and all musicians, you know, the, the way he influenced the way we think about music and the way we think about the basis function in music, you know, in contemporary music. So isn't it challenging to choose to play the bass after uh, It's challenging, but it's, yes, I mean, Jocko set a standard that, that is, has yet to be surpassed, you know. Um, but but there, Jocko was influenced by, by a lot of acoustic bass players. I mean, he, he listened to like people like Charles Mingus and Scott LaFaro, and he listened, I'm sure, listened to Ron Carter and uh, Ray Brown. And he, he was, Jocko was just such a, such a total um, uh, um, student of, the, of music and of, of the bass. You know, he, Jocko knew everything about the history of jazz. He, he, he was a fan of jazz. He, he followed, you know, Miles Davis and, and Joe Zolino, Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, and he, 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 he wanted to associate himself with those people because he, he was influenced by those people. And, he, and Jocko's influence goes back a long way. But Jocko was unique because it wasn't only jazz. He, Jocko was probably the first eclectic bass player because he, he was influenced by not only jazz but by R&B music and pop music and rock and country and western and almost every, very, very influenced by classical music. So he had, he had an eclectic background in his, in his uh, musical upbringing. I think that was important in his development and in his impact that, that, that later was responsible for his impact. Can you talk to us about the technicality of his music? Yeah, well, Jocko, he had, he, I guess he had like these thumbs. He had like a deformed thumb or something. So he could do things on the instrument 
that, that very few people were able to do because of his, the, just the physiology of his hands. And uh, there, um, you may have seen pictures of him where he's, he's, his th he, can, he could dislocate both of his thumbs. So he could do things technically on the base that nobody ever, had ever seen before. No, nobody would e even ever attempt because, because Jocko had this, this certain type of physical structure to his hands th that enabled him to produce the tones and the sounds and the, and the magical things that he produced on the bass. It was, it, that, the, the physical part of it was very important, I think. And Have you ever been him? I got to meet him a few times, yeah. How was it? Very interesting. I mean, I was, you know, I was a huge fan of his, uh, you know. He was uh, an idol of mine, and uh, he's, he's one of the major reasons why I play music today, you know. Um, listening to Jocko as a kid, hearing that first solo record, he actually hearing the Weather Report record first, and then, and then getting access to the other records that he had done prior to that. I think the Pat Metheny, Bright Size Life was a very important one, but that had come before. That didn't get as much, much media coverage, uh, but once the Weather Report records started coming out, and the solo records started getting recognition. People started going back and listening to the things that he had done, and, and even as far back as the Wayne Cochran, some of the Wayne Cochran recordings, that and, and so the R&B bands that he played with in Florida. What kind of a man was he? Well, I didn't know him that well. I mean, I just knew him peripherally. I'm, you know, I got to meet him, and that's you know, that's how uh, through Jocko was how I, I became exposed to Peter Erskine and his career and so the connection between Jocko and Peter Erskine is very important as, as anybody knows who's who follows music history from the 70s uh, you know because Jocko was instrumental in getting Peter on the Weather Report band and so um, I, I was familiar with Peter w f f uh, from his tenure with Stan Kenton and Maynard Ferguson but when Peter and Jocko joined Weather Report, uh, actually Jocko got Peter on the band, uh, I think is the way the story goes. Uh, that, was, that was a very important uh, event in musical history and the, the, that chemistry um, between those two guys is, is just legendary, you know, and if you listen to the records it's, 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 it's obvious, I think, to anyone. That, that they, they set a standard that has, has yet to be surpassed in terms of uh, innovation and uh, just pure originality and 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 tradition, you know, and all those all those those things combined. It's very rare to hear musicians that, to, that play together on that level. You know. Is there one of uh, Jacko's composition that you really worked hard on? Yeah, uh, three views of a secret was something that 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 I learned to play on the bass. That was one of the f one of the first things. But you know, going back to the, his first solo records, I mean. Um, you know the Donna Lee track is something that I think all ba that's that's uh, almost become a staple of every bass player's vocabulary. You know I have t I teach at all the universities in Southern California, and all my students come in, and that's the first thing they want to play for me. They want to show me that they can play Donna Lee, and that that's an old Charlie Parker song that goes b b way back to the 40s, and it's based on an old standard called Back Home in Indiana. And it's funny that they know Jocko's recording of it, and some of them can even play Jocko solo, verbatim. Uh, I've worked on that a lot, you know, I've forgotten it now, I can't, I can't, I can't execute it anymore, but, but, but I was very influenced by that. But they, they all know Donna Lee, but they don't know where the song came from, and I think that's an interesting gap, you know, in the generations. And, and Jocko reintroduced that music to a whole new generation of music, of, of music listeners, myself included. Okay, if you were only allowed one word to describe him, which one would it be? Uh, one word. Innovator. You know, uh, it, probably the, the most important innovator on the base for the like second half of the 20th century. Like I say, Charles Mingus and Paul Chambers, uh, Scott LaFaro, Ray Brown, you know, and even going back as far as Jimmy Blanton with Duke Ellington's band. Those guys were all very important, and they were a big influence on Jocko. But Jocko, because he played the electric bass, and because he, he was able to develop a, a sound on the electric bass that was revolutionary, it's impossible to, to reproduce that sound on the acoustic bass, because the acoustic bass has a much shorter envelope. Jocko was able to take the sustain that comes from an electric instrument and the, and the singing quality of the fretless electric bass and, and, and develop a sound 
that was revolutionary, you know, and, and, he, and he, he used it to exploit melody and harmony like no one else had ever done prior to him. You know, but, but taking all those early influences and applying it to this modern instrument. So he really, Jocko, and basically he defined what the electric bass can do. And, and there's, I don't think anybody has, there have been a lot of great players come, and we're all influenced by Jocko, and, but I don't think anybody's really surpassed that, 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 um, uh, that innovative um, accomplishment that he, that he did. You know. Jacko's yes, I have, as a matter of fact, yeah, yeah, and he sounds great. Um, he looks exactly like Jocko. It's amazing how much he resembles his father. Um, and he is very gifted, you know. Um, I met him years ago, and I guess he still lives in Florida. And I don't know if he's pursuing a career in music now or not. I haven't heard anything from him. Uh, I heard him play, and, and he, <laughs> it's interesting, he, he had actually learned all of his father's solos and, and songs from, from the recordings. And he was very young when Jocko died, so I don't think he really had much of a relationship with his father prior to, his, prior to Jocko's death, but, but he, he went and sat down with the records and, and got all this stuff together, and the world is waiting for Julius now, I guess. I don't know if he's ever gonna emerge as an, as, uh, an important uh, player like his father was, but it must be difficult for him to, to try to be a bass player and to try to live in the shadow of his father because it would be like being the son of Miles Davis or Herbie Hancock or somebody, you know. I mean, Jocko was that important. So um, it's, uh, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, but, but he's very talented and, I'm, and I hope that he finds his own voice and finds his own uh, place in, 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 with a career in music, if, if that's what he wants. I, and I, I think it may be. Moi j'ai une petite question. Dans, la, dans le, la formation de ce soir, il a un rôle de musicien harmonique alors que son instrument devrait être un peu plus accompagnant. Est-ce que c'est -ce est -ce est pour ça d'avoir pu choisir le point de six cordes ou est-ce que c'est un, une jolie place à l'instrument que de faire des formations sans instrument à, 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 harmonique Donc, say tonight mm -hmm. and tonight. You were the blend of the harmonics, right? Le seul instrument harmonique. Okay, so tonight you were the only harmonic instrument. And uh, Billy, what else? Et, et et la basse n'est pas un instrument so, harmonique. And bass is not an harmonic instrument, so it is? Well, it comes from Jocko. It comes from Jocko. I mean, I wouldn't be approaching the bass this way. The, the way that I, the thing that I'm trying to develop now is utilizing the, the harmonic capabilities of the bass, and Jocko was the one who opened the door for that, and he did it on a four-string bass, you know, so I have a little bit of an advantage because I have a, an ex, a little extra higher range with the six-string bass. Um, so that, that was part of the inspiration for Jocko, from Jocko to me, to, to try to develop that kind of approach to playing the bass. But it's, but it's a little bit of a misconception because I'm playing I'm not the only harmonic instrument in, in this particular trio, the lounge art ensemble, because Peter's playing harmony too, and, and Bob Shepard's playing harmony. And, and I don't know if you, there were a couple of times when Bob was using harmonics on the saxophone, playing kind of some chords of his own, and that's the, kind of the whole idea behind this group is to, 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 to approach it from a min, min, minimalistic concept and see how far we can exploit the capabilities of each instrument. You know, when Peter plays the way he tunes the drums and his, his, his touch on the drums, he, Peter produces chords and overtones too. You know, if, if you listen carefully and if the acoustic environment is, 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 is good enough to, to, to expose that, you can hear that we're all thinking harmonically, but because I have play a string instrument, I'm, I, I'm able to, to maybe, you know, um, demonstrate that a little more clearly than the other guys because I, I can play notes simultaneously and they have to operate from a purely monophonic um, standpoint, you know. <laughs> 